You're listening to How I Sell, a podcast built for early career sales professionals. You'll hear stories, best practices, and guidance from top sales leaders on what it takes to become a sales superstar. Today's episode is made possible by Ramped Careers. Ramped is on a mission to build the next generation of workforce-ready talent. All right. We are back. Joining us today is the former VP of sales at Hierology, former senior AE at Quantum, former director at Modern Luxury, my former comrade in arms at the Green Coupon Factory, and the current SVP of sales at Provi, Max Lohenbaum. Max, welcome to the show. Thanks, Danny. Good to, good to be with you, buddy. Yeah, great to be with you as always. Uh, obviously, we, we go way back to our days at Groupon, uh, but for those who don't exactly know who you are, who is Max Lowenbaum? I mean, I'm just a guy that sat next to Danny Leonard in, in 2010. Um, you know, uh, uh, honestly, um, you know, I'm from, from St. Louis, from the Midwest. Um, I've spent the last 15 years in sales leadership, um, and, and, and what, what I think defined, has defined my career at this point. Point um, is my ability to um, help others learn and grow, especially in their early sales roles. Um, thinking through, you know, the last 15 years, really 12 of the 15 have been focused around building sales cultures that can um, either transition new grads into sales or can help those with six months or a year of sales experience um, turn into well compensated, uh, you know, seasoned. Um, intelligent sales folks that that can continue to grow their career. Um, and, and I'm a little biased, but but in what I would say is 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 the best career path, um, in, in not only for for new grads but really for anybody. Um, you know, I, I would say my career has been defined as my by my ability to help other people uh, launch their careers in sales, and and I've been really fortunate to to be a part of some great great sales careers. Yours included. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Certainly, you uh, you definitely had an impact on on my early days. I remember sitting by you in my first few days at Groupon and just uh, being in awe of well, one how you carried yourself, and two, uh, you taught me taught me a lot of what I what I needed to know in in those early days. And and you're the perfect guest for us because of all of your experience with training and onboarding and hiring both junior and senior sellers, but for for sure the the junior folks. Uh, I want to go back though before we talk on how you manage and how you build teams to your formative years. So take me back to you coming out of Rollins, uh, Rollins College. Uh, you're about to embark on a career in sales. What what are your formative years like? Who were you like back then? Yeah, good question. So, um, you know, I went, to, I went to school in Florida um, from St. Louis, which I, you know, I just knew I wanted to get away for a couple of years. And um, I initially thought that I was going to be a lawyer because that's what my dad did. And, um, you know, I took the LSAT and I, I did fine. Um, and I sat down with my dad to start to apply to law schools. And he said, you know, instead of sinking a bunch of money into uh, a degree that you might not use, why not go out and try to make some money and uh, see if you can sell something, see if you can be a part of the, the revenue arm of a business. And um, I thought it was a good idea um, because, you know, I don't really like reading that much. And I didn't, I didn't really want to be a lawyer. I just wanted to have some focus in some direction. And um, so, so like that comment about be a part of the, the, the revenue, um, you know, drive revenue for a business and, and, and be responsible for a material part of that revenue really started to motivate me. And so I looked for opportunities where um, I felt like I could make an impact. And, and I think, you know, even today, almost 20 years later, when I talk to folks that are just out of school, um, you know, I, I use some advice that kind of my dad gave me back then, which is don't, don't judge the place on where it is when you get there, judge it on where it can be by the time you leave and the impact that you can have on that Delta, whether it's three years or five years or 10 years. Um, if, if you can really be at a business, um, that, that undergoes some incredible growth and you can be a material part of the growth, it doesn't really matter how big they are. When you leave, you have an amazing story and, and you have the ability to to take that in and market it elsewhere. So um, I found my first job uh, here in Chicago. I, being from St. Louis, I kind of knew I needed to be in a bigger city. Um, this is back when you had to, to uh, live in the same place that you worked. Um, so today things have changed a little bit, but um, you know, thinking about 
um, the kinds of businesses that I wanted to, to, to work for. Um, I just wanted a business that was willing to take a shot on somebody without sales experience. I, I remember really distinctly, and I think you and I have talked about this, I think you were in the same position when you, know, you graduate from school and you wanna sell, it's hard because um, every place wants experience and, and nobody's willing to, to give you experience. So um, I found myself in a position where um, I needed to find a place that was used to taking fresh grads and, and training and teaching them how to sell. But, but I also knew I didn't want to go um, to a large sales organization where I was just going to be an, another number. So um, I ended up finding this really cool um, company here in Chicago called Modern Luxury Media. That's actually just down the street from where I am right now um, at, on, on LaSalle and Kinsey. And um, I was uh, one of our first or, or a relatively early um, sales rep um, at, a, at, a, at Modern Luxury, which um, it had a, a flagship magazine um, back when people used to read magazines uh, called Chicago Social. And what I really liked about the job, Danny, was that, um, you know, I, I was a print salesperson and, and I wore a suit every day um, and, and I was able to, to walk more or less door to door in my territory, which was Lincoln Park here in Chicago, one of the most vibrant and, and exciting territories. Um, and I got to work with restaurants and bars. Um, and, and, and I learned a ton about what it takes to, to promote a local business, which little did I know would help, help, help my career tremendously down the line. So, um, you know, find a place where, where you can make a difference, um, where you, you are connected to the, to the culture in some way. It was a small team. Um, my, my immediate manager, Luke, uh, was the kind of guy that I just I wanted to be like. Um, you know, he was a, a sales guy through and through and, and, and his career path inspired me. Um, and, and then, you know, I felt a connection. I've always loved food um, and, and, and I love going out, you know, back in those days. And so being able to uh, be connected to the businesses we were working with just, just made me that much more. Uh, but, but really, really soon after starting, um, even though I was, I was in a, a, a sales role for three years, I realized that I got a lot more motivation out of coaching and teaching and helping others. Um, even when I didn't really have any experience, I would try to find things that, that, that I could teach um, I was one of the younger people on the on the staff, so I would teach people, you know, how to use their computer, and you know, uh, uh, in in the the relatively you know early days of social media and things like that, um, I, I would try to find things that I could impart on the older sales folks, um, because that's really what motivated me, even in my very first sales job. That's awesome, and uh, I didn't realize this, but our early careers kind of lined up pretty well. I actually took the LSAT too, and realized very quickly, actually through the LSAT process, that I just I just hated it. I, I don't know what it was about it, but maybe it was the slog of training uh, or trying to learn how to navigate the ins and outs of logic statements. Uh, but law was just not for me. And I, I quickly after found uh, found a group on. Um, so let's talk about that, that early stage though, and leading up into when you realized that you loved coaching others. When did you realize that sales was easy or natural for you? And, and what was the thing that made it click? I mean, I think in modern luxury, um, I just, I, I kind of realized that like um, the math of selling, uh, I felt like I had the energy. And, and, and I just said to myself, like I was selling face to face, I was going door to door. Like if I just open enough doors today, literally, you know, now we use this kind of the, the uh, you know, the, the symbolism of opening a door, but I, I was actually, you know, walking, walking more or less door to door. Um, and I just get in front of enough business owners and I show them the magazine and I talk them to the value prop and I ask a bunch of questions um, and I run my process. You know, I have the energy to, to open that door enough times. And, and I have the energy to get the door shut in my face and still open the next one. And sort of as soon as I started to figure that piece out, then I started to say to myself, okay, if I'm going to be able to walk into a hundred businesses every day, and today I'm only converting, you know, 10% into appointments, um, what would I have to do differently to convert 15? And what kind of value proposition um, would I have to bring? What sort of questions would I have to ask? Um, you know, if I, instead of just bringing a magazine, if I also brought a, a testimonial um, or an example of an event that we did, um, or if I offered to, to have some kind of an added value alongside a partnership, would that increase my conversion? And, and, and when I started to figure out as a salesperson that I had the energy to keep my activity up and that I could kind of inspect 
my, my skill and my conversion and, and improve it a little bit, then I was like, okay, I, I might have something here. Um, but the first thing that I did is I would run back and just teach it to everybody else, you know? And, and so that's kind of how I knew that um, I wasn't just going to be this killer that, you know, uh, we've been around and, and I've been fortunate to work with a lot of people with that mindset um, that would, would take that gas pedal and mash it all the way down, you know, I would run to everybody else and, and, and kind of tell them how to, how to go faster um, and, and, and share what I learned with them. And, um, you know, that, that obviously uh, started to, to inch me towards leadership, um, even though, even to this day, I mean, I want to be in as many sales calls as I possibly can, be, because I still love the process and, and, and I, I still need to burn off the energy. Yeah, love that. And love the math driven approach of seeing sales as a numbers game, something that is not always easy for young sellers to grasp when they're getting in, they're trying to learn a playbook, to learn the new tech. Really, it just boils down to, if I make X amount more calls, more, more value prop statements, if I get more pitches out, it will translate to success if I'm doing it the right way. So when you think back at that early stage of your career and even into your later roles at Quantum and, and Groupon, who were some of the early teachers you had or early mentors you had and who inspired you to do better? Um, I mean, in the very early days, it was my, my, my managers. You know, I, I worked for two guys at, at CS, Luke and, and Matt, um, and, and they're just both like, like I said, like the kind of people uh, I, I remember, you know, Luke, Luke Gibson, my very first boss. Um, you know, he took me out to, to lunch my first day and he told me that he defines success as balance. Um, and, and, you know, he wants to, he wants to have the, the perfect balance in his life, in his work. Um, and, and, and just like hearing, hearing somebody who had taught himself how to sell, who had been promoted, um, you know, who, who was making, making good money and driving a nice car, um, you know, hearing him tell me that he could find balance in his life. And, and, and that he could, he could create that career path in, in selling um, just gave me so much motivation and, um, you know, made me want to continue in, on the path that I was on. Um, after Modern Luxury, so I was there for three years, um, I, I had a stint right before Groupon at a company called Quantum that you mentioned. And Quantum was an interesting business because they were a print business, but they were transitioning into digital. And so I was kind of a part of that transition. And um, at Modern Luxury, I was the youngest guy by maybe two or three years. At Quantum, I was the youngest guy by like 15 years. And my mentor was a guy named Ron Levine. He was a great, great guy. Um, had been in the print business for, I don't know, 35 years. And, and just Danny, like the most old school dude, um, you know, I just knew everybody everywhere that we went, like, you know, took people out to lunch six days a week, um, you know, the king of like, the business card and, and had all the like kind of classic one-liners that you would expect a, a sales guy to have, you know, taught me how to pause during a negotiation, you know, always uh, dealt face to face. And, and so like being in the world that, that I would be in a year later at Groupon and everything being about speed and innovation and having an inside sales team and, and trying to run as fast as we possibly could and, and scale the business, being around a guy that just sold so old school um, and in, in, in the way that really isn't, isn't practiced today as much as it was in the past, like that had a big impact on, on not only me as a salesperson, but also me as a leader. Um, so, so I would say between Ron, um, you know, Luke and, and Matt, those are, those are my early. Yeah, I love that. I, I didn't get too many of those at Groupon and we were moving so quickly. So we did have some, you know, Darren Schwartz, obviously you, you can tell he's, he's from, at least he was taught by some of the older, older generation of schmoozers, just great personalities, got the one-liners, got the jokes, but we didn't have so many of those at Groupon, but that's awesome that you got to see that, that uh, classic Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross type, you know, the, the, uh, <laughs> the door to door got, got every line, uh, got every business. Card. That's awesome. Um, how was it in your early days selling to senior level decision makers were you ever apprehensive? And did, if, if so, how did you deal with it? Of course, man. I mean, um, you're almost always in, in a sales situation, especially if, if you're within your first three years of selling, you're going to be more junior than the folks that you're selling to. Um, and so for me, you know, I tried to make sure that I had a process that I could fall back on. 
um, that I was as prepared as I could possibly be for the situations that I would be, the, be in, the objections that I'd have to handle, um, you know, that I was as prepared as possible to be able to tell stories and ask questions um, and, and kind of, as, as, as you may remember, like keep, keep the prospect in my process instead of being pulled into theirs, especially when they have a lot of experience uh, on you and they're in a position that's higher than yours. Um, you know, it's, it's really easy for them to start throwing out objections and, you know, stalling and, and, and even hard negotiating way before, um, you know, you want to begin a negotiation. Um, so you, you've just got to be able to fall back on your sales process. You've got to be as prepared as you can possibly be. Um, and, and you've got to try to hold your own as, as challenging as it is. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally makes sense. So moving on a little bit further down the line, right? You go to Quantum, you get Groupon. Groupon takes off like a rocket ship. And you have a great career as an AE, uh, obviously closing a bunch of deals, but then you're promoted quickly into leadership. How was that transition for you? And when did you know you could lead a team to success? Um, good question. I, I think I knew, um, I think I knew before before anybody else knew. I don't know if I ever told you the story, but you mentioned Darren on the very my very first day at Groupon, which is like November, 2009. Darren Schwartz, who was our SVP, ran all of sales. Um, pulled us all into a, a small kitchen and said, hey guys, I want to give you a heads up. We're going to be opening a management. We're going to have sales managers at Groupon. Um, I was like the you know, 25th or maybe 30th salesperson. And we had no, we had no managers. We, we just more or less had Darren. Um, and it was my, my first day. And I went up to Darren and I said, hey, Darren, you know, uh, we just got out of training like 10 minutes ago, but I want to be a sales manager here. And he was like, whoa, buddy, like, take it easy. It's your first day. <laughs> like, you know, we just showed you where the bathroom was. Um, and, and I said, you know, the answer might not be yes today. Um, and that's okay if it's not. But I, I'm going to do the job that I have as well as I possibly can. But over the course of the next few weeks and months, um, when, you know, in the moments when, when, at, when I've achieved what I need to achieve in my role, I'm going to be working on the next job. I'm going to be teaching and coaching, and um, I'm going to try to learn this sales process um, and, and evolve the sales process so that we're able to achieve our goals um, even more effectively. And then I'm going to teach other people what I learned so that I can come to you with a resume internally, um, because I knew I'd never done it before, you know, and, and so um, it ended up working out that in about five months, they were opening a new position. And I walked into the interview with Darren and said, Hey, man, you know, these are the people that I've been working with, um, that are, that have come on board in the last five months. These are the deals that we've been able to close. These are the processes that I've changed. Um, you know, this is the, you know, the thing, these are the things that I can already prove I, I, I bring to a sales team. Um, and, and he gave me a shot. For our listeners out there, Groupon was moving very quickly. This may not be your typical promotion path from AE five months later promoted into management. But I will say when you catch a rocket ship and it grows so quickly, the talent or the super talented folks there will have to, by nature, take the leadership positions right away. So, you know, obviously, Max, you saw the opportunity, you went for it, and you had, uh, at that point, been coached by great people. You've seen great, you saw great management, and you rose to the occasion. And I know when I got in there, it's probably two or three months later, you had been promoted, uh, and I was just on the phone, you know, shadowing you probably three weeks earlier. Uh, and it, it was super impressive. And I was always, um, I always admired from afar your ability to lead a team, you had the respect of your team at every stop along the way. Um, some, something I know that you care about and you put a premium on is building a career plan, a productive promotion path for your employees. How do you structure career or promotion plans? What's important when you build those out? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're going to attract talent in today's uh, environment, you have to be able to have a true career path and not just be able to say, oh, you know, one person became a manager. Um, you know, 
one of the biggest mistakes that I think we see, and, and, and you've coached a lot of businesses away from this mistake, but um, that I think we see a lot of, of businesses make these days is they take their best salesperson and they promote them to management just because that person's their best salesperson. Um, and for me, career pathing isn't just about you becoming a leader. Um, actually, in, in my opinion, um, you know, a leadership position is a totally different path than an, an individual contributor. And so, you know, for, for your listeners who are early sales folks, they should think about and, 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 and talk with their leadership teams about a sales um, commission or a sales career path that increases their commissions, that increases their, the opportunity, the size of the deals that they call on, that gives them additional resources. Um, and I can talk you through, you know, what we built at Groupon and, 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 and Hierology and, and what we're building here at Provi. Um, but, you know, the goal is that you can see, you know, within the next six months, um, and, and, and in some cases even sooner, if there's a fast track for promotion um, at, at at um, hierology, you get promoted every three months. Um, if you truly, you know, overachieve, um, if you're you're uh, in, aligned with the core values, and, and and if you're growing in your role, you know, the business should feed you as much opportunity as as they can, and they should do so in a way that is standardized, where you already know what the next level is. You know what you need to do to achieve it. You know what you get once you get there, and you're able to see that pretty much right in front of your face. And, and um, if something like leadership is attractive to you, that can be an option um, for, for your growth, but you should see a linear, linear path right in front of you as an individual contributor. Um, otherwise, you know, businesses today can lose their best talent to, to other opportunities. Um, and, and, and in my opinion, the single best thing that a business can do is, is keep its best people and inspire them to, to do even more. So um, having a structured career path is incredibly important. If, if you work somewhere where they don't have one and, and um, you wanna connect me with your VP of sales, I'm happy to share what we've done, but um, I think you're doing a disservice to, to all the incredibly young talent out there if, if you can't put a, a clear path. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. It's critically important and often discounted specifically at early stage companies. Some Thing that I am very passionate about as well is how you hire, how you train, how you onboard, and then how you continue to uh, to elevate to success through promotion plans, through career plans. And, and I know, um, you know, what you just dropped on us was, was extremely knowledgeable. Uh, do you subscribe to a specific leadership philosophy? Yeah, good question. Um, in terms of sales philosophy and leadership philosophy, I think it's important to be well-rounded. Um, you know, if there was one perfect, you know, way to sell or way to lead, we would all be doing it. But I, I think what makes, um, you know, every culture unique is that um, it has different, you know, so, some differences in, in terms of um, the way you sell or the way you lead. There are no question um, some kind of hallmarks to, to, to a, a strong sales culture on both the, you know, sales process and the, the leadership philosophy. Um, things like creating growth and aligning business goals with personal gain and being able to create and scale a, a powerful culture that, that inspires your employees. Those sorts of things are kind of table stakes today. Um, how you get there, and I think that's one of the cool things about being a leader, you know, you're, you're able to borrow from different folks and you don't just have to pick a lane and stick with it. You know, same thing as a salesperson, you know, um, there are a million fantastic sales philosophies and, and methodologies out there and you can study all of them and, and create your own based on the market that you're in and the product that you're selling. Um, and, and I think leadership's the same. Yeah, I, I love that. I think, yeah, it's, it's clear that you take the time to look at, study, think about leadership and how to bring leaders into your company. I know from your time at Hierology, uh, for those who don't know, it's a talent management software for automotive, healthcare, SMBs. You know the ins and outs of the hiring process almost better than anyone right now and how to find top talent in tough markets uh, and what a sound onboarding and hiring process looks like. For our audience that's looking at their first job, uh, what are some characteristics of a well-run hiring process? Yeah, I mean, it's very similar to a sales process in that uh, the number one most important thing is activity. So if, if you're in process somewhere and uh, they don't get back to you quickly, uh, they don't let you know where you're at, um, you know, uh, that's a red flag for me. Um, if I were a candidate today, um, you know, of, of course, you have to understand that 
at this very moment, this is a really complex um, and, and uh, challenging you know, time for, for businesses and for those in the market. Um, however, you know, there is, is still such a premium on great talent that um, if a business can't uh, you know, respond back to applications, if, if, if they can't show you, um, you know, that they're putting you into a process, you know, into, into a recruiting process, um, it makes it really challenging for them to be able uh, to, to, to win you as an, as an employee. Um, and, and if you, if you have a disjointed or, um, you know, a, a slow, um, recruiting process, you know, you're, you're just getting somebody off, uh, not on the best start. Whereas, um, you know, as a counterpoint, if you talk to a recruiter, um, and they send you a note right away, and, and they're super courteous, they outline the next steps, everything happens, um, you know, the timeline, the, the way that they said that it would, um, you feel like their, their team uh, shows genuine care. And, you know, the leaders uh, give you their time and, 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 and their their attention, you know, then you, you really leave that interview process, whether you take the job or not, with such a, a powerful outlook on that business. And that outlook really reverberates. So much of what we did at Hireology was about creating an employment brand, not just on what you see on, on the website that, you know, tells you about their core values and the kinds of, you know, career paths and, and things that we already talked about, but in the interview process, being able to teach people and excite people and inspire people um, is really, really good for your business. And, and if, if you're a job seeker, you know, that gut feeling coming out of the interview process is almost more important than, than anything else. So, um, you know, it, it's just incredibly important that you take inventory as you're going through an interview process as a candidate and you think about um, how does this interview process reflect what's important to this company and, and am I going to be a good fit? Yeah, that's super important. And a lot of times the folks we teach and, the, and, and for our audience, they come in thinking that, you know, they're running from interview to interview and it's really their race uh, to run. And really it's, 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 it's a two-way race, right? They, the employer has to impress you as the candidate and you you are the asset as the candidate as well. Uh, and the interview process gives you a lens into, uh, I believe gives you a lens into the inner workings of that company. If it's sloppy, uh, if they're disjointed, if they push your, your, your interviews back over and over and over again, they don't get back to you. That shows you that's revealing about the company. I think Max, you, you nailed it there with, with that answer. What's one piece of tactical advice you could give our audience about interviewing for their first sales role? I think when I think about what I look for, uh, I think the number one most important thing is to be honest. Uh, I, I think if, if you're asked a question, hopefully you're asked uh, a, a relatively difficult question and, and you're able to be honest and show some vulnerability. Um, you know, for, from where I sit as a leader, uh, so many people try to win, you know, they, they want to have all of the right answers. Um, and instead, instead of just answering, honestly, like if I ask somebody a question about a time when they handled rejection, um, you know, I don't want a canned answer um, that, that they, they, they could have Googled. I, I want them to be really honest and, and vulnerable. And I want them to, to, to be comfortable sharing something with me that, you know, in most cases uh, might sort of disqualify them, you know, because this job's supposed to be about not, not having rejection, like that, that's complete bullshit, dude. And, and you know, it. like sales is about getting rejected. And so I want people to be honest. And, 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 you know, when you ask questions, like, tell me about a time you failed, like, yeah, when, I'm not asking it because if I'm going to see you as weak for being a failure, I'm asking because I want, I want to know that you can own up uh, to when you've made mistakes and, and you can learn from them. So just be super honest and super vulnerable and, and lay yourself um, out there and know that an interview is not about winning or losing, it's about fit. And so if whatever you say doesn't fit into what they're looking for, that's a good thing. You know, like you, you dodged a bullet there and you'll find a, a better fit elsewhere. Because if you just, you know, win the interview and say what they want to hear and, you know, uh, they hire you thinking that you're something that you're not, you're going to end up uh, in a job that you don't like with expectations that you didn't sign up for. Um, and, 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 and you're going to end up wasting a lot more time and energy either trying to get out or trying to fit in instead of just being who you are um, and, and being honest. It's great. Yeah. Honesty, be vulnerable, be genuine and no, no, no. 
your greatest weakness is not your greatest strength at the same time. It doesn't work like that. You don't have and, to give that canned answer. And, it's, and especially when you don't have any experience, you know, like you, know, <laughs> if, if, you are who you are. That's all you have. Um, and, and so just, you know, be yourself and, and, and uh, don't be afraid of, of, of the outcome one way or the other. It, it'll... A few last questions before we get you out of here. So now on to Pro V, you're the high flying SVP of sales. What characteristics do you look for? What are the top ones you look for when you're hiring SDRs or BDRs or junior salespeople? I think um, one of the biggest ones is curiosity. So um, one of the, you know, I'm sure this is, has come up, um, you know, maybe with other folks that you've spoken to, um, and, and it may be something you've interviewed thousands, if not tens of thousands of people, something that, that, that irks you as well. But, you know, when I'm asking somebody for questions at the end of an interview, um, I'm, I'm really, I, you know, while I want to answer their questions because I, I want to help them find a fit at our business, um, I'm really just looking for how curious they are. I want to know like how much have they thought about this role and uh, working with us and being in the in the, the alcohol industry here at Pro-V, um, being in the Chicago tech industry. You know, I, I want to hear in their questions that they really uh, desire the answer. Uh, because that's the same way they're going to talk to our customers. And so, um, you know, when you're talking to a prospect or a customer, you have to, to care so much about the nuance of their business. Most sales roles today sell a relatively niche product. So you're trying to get a prospect to think about something that they might not think about every single day. And so in order to, to uncover that, you know, and, and, and create that discovery, you've got to ask great questions and you got to really give a shit about the answers. And, and if you don't, um, you know, it, it's going to be pretty clear to the prospect that you're just reading off a list of questions or you're blowing you know your pitch right by them and not asking any questions and, and, and not showing any curiosity whatsoever so being able to really ask great questions and care about the answers is incredibly important to us here. it's awesome <clears throat> something we hammer in our training too is when you get to that stage of the interview and you're going to get the question every time what questions do you have for me you can't just look at the list of questions as provided for, for uh, to you on a, the HubSpot blog or any of the online content. You have to be genuine. You have to be curious, not just about the company, but about the interviewer. Uh, and and Max, you verbalized that better than we could do in our training. But uh, it's, it's great to hear from somebody who, who does do these interviews and puts on these interviews quite often. Um, what's a common misstep you see young salespeople fall into early in their careers? I mean, there are a lot of them. I, I think one is, you know, you should um, use other people as your yardstick for a positive um, motivation. If you see somebody's name ahead of you on a list, you should use it to inspire yourself and encourage yourself. You should not use it to discourage yourself. I, I see so many young sales folks that see somebody else's name above them and immediately start to list all the reasons why that person has a better or, you know, their territory or um, their, you know, their intellect or, or, or their charisma. Um, think about all the other reasons why they're not going to, they're not like that person. Instead of saying like the difference between me and them is, is, is work. And, and all I have to do is work harder or the difference between me and them is, is conversion, you know, like uh, it, it's math. And so I need to understand the math and I need to be motivated and inspired positively to achieve the same math that they achieve. And if that means calling somebody different, if that means calling at a different time, if that means, you know, moving from, from call to email um, or, or changing what you're saying in, in any of the mediums that we communicate with prospects, like that's what it means. But, but there's nothing, there's no fundamental difference um, between, between you and anybody else that should discourage you. It should only. Awesome. Great, great, great advice. Uh, and, and frankly, you know, for, for me personally, I haven't been a part of many sales teams where it's been super cutthroat and that attitude has been super it's competitive over everything. So I, I really haven't seen that in my career. And I would say, you know, this advice really rings true. You'll get you know, maybe sales that still has a sig stigma of being this competitive, hard driving, mm -hmm. you versus everybody type of place. But I, I just haven't seen that um, in my career. And I'm sure those, those uh, environments exist, but generally people are just happy to be supportive of one another and help each other up. Uh, especially if, you know, if you're, if you're on top of somebody, if you're below somebody on the leaderboard, I don't think that matters too much. Um, yeah, and I think Danny, just, just to add, like one of the things that I see a lot is, you know, um, 
everybody wins when the team wins. And, 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 and that's obviously a, a great mentality to have. Um, you just want to contribute as much as you possibly can to the team. So, you know, seeing somebody else's accomplishment as proof that it's possible um, is, is, is always beneficial because it inspires you to be able to do better and it celebrates the team. Doing really, really good. Really good advice. Um, grow the pie for everybody, not just yourself. Uh, so last question for you. Uh, it's one we ask all our guests. Now that you have the benefit of hindsight, if you could go back in time and give young Max uh, Rollins grad one piece of advice as he heads off into his early sales career, what advice would you give yourself? Probably get a haircut. I mean, it just like, <laughs> I still have a hard time like fitting in the Zoom frame. <laughs> like at 22 is way worse. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I think, I think I would just say, enjoy it. Like I was so focused on, on, on the outcome, you know, I, was, I wanted, I wanted to be a leader. I wanted to, you know, um, make a certain amount of money. I, you know, I, I didn't even know what I wanted, but I knew that like, I didn't want to be where I was, you know, I, I knew, I knew I wanted to grow and I, and I wanted to, um, you know, take, take positive steps in, in my career. Um, and, and instead of at some points, just like, you know, look, feeling like I was in the good old days when I was in the good old days at every single one of my jobs, there was a moment where like, at some point I looked back on that moment and thought, man, things were awesome. Um, and I still think that about every job that I've ever had. And so um, I think I would just encourage myself to live in those moments and, and, and not be so focused on. Them. Yeah. Great, great advice. Uh, as, I felt as I just gave the advice that like, you have to have a career path and, and, and you do, and, and everybody should aspire to, to what's next. Um, but at the same time, man, you've just got to, you got to enjoy where you're at and, and who you're, who you're there with. Um, because like those early teams that you work with, those early managers that you work for that really motivate you and inspire you because you've, you've interviewed well and you've made great choices. Like just, just enjoy that because, um, you know, at some point when you're on to what's, what, what's next for you, um, you know, that time's going to be over. Yeah, that's great. I've felt similarly about uh, my career, even, you know, the, gr the group on days, especially the group on days, uh, you look around, you're like, Oh, you know, this is going to be, this is going to last forever. And then, you know, you snap your fingers and it's gone. And the people you worked with uh, aren't the people you work with anymore. And that crew has gone on to do great things elsewhere. And it, it moves very, very quickly as is, you know, many things in life. But I think be present is, a, is an awesome piece of advice and enjoy yeah. the ride. And I think one more thing to that, Danny, is like really connect with the people that you work with. Like, you know, you and I could pull up our LinkedIn right now and, and, and we could go back to 2010 and, and, and if we could you know, virtually look around that room and see where all those people are right now, it's pretty incredible. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure the people that you've had on this podcast, some of them are a reflection of that network. And, 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 and you know, obviously your career and my career are both a reflection of that network. Um, so being able to take the time early on to really connect with the people that you work with, knowing that they're gonna help grow you, you're, it's gonna make work more fun, but also, in the future, those connections are going to all go off and do amazing things. Um, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to think about what a, what a group of people um, can accomplish together. And then when everybody decides that it's time for them and goes to do something else, you're watching all those people do a bunch of amazing things. Very warm, positive, and fuzzy way to exit the interview. Max, uh, one of my early mentors and coaches, uh, a great coach to all of the folks that he works with now at Pro-V. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. We really appreciate it. We've got tons of things to learn from you. Uh, and if you don't mind, we'd love to have you on once more uh, in the future. Anytime, anytime, buddy. Thanks, Danny. Great to see you. Uh, congrats you on all your success and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. You too. You too. Bye, Max. Cheers, buddy.